Good morning ladies and gentlemen, it's David here and welcome back to another video. This time we have to take a look at a bunch of new information that just came out for Persona 3 Reload. There's a lot of information that you guys will want to hear in this one about the game itself, the actual content of the game and gameplay mechanics and what was in the original that is not going to be in this version of the game, what changed, what features are not present anymore, what did they work on, what are they changing for Reload. There's so many good information and this information comes from an interview that was done by Atlas, producer and WADA of Persona 3 Reload being interviewed by a news outlet, media outlet in Japan called 4Gamer. And that whole interview was translated by Persona Central. I'm going to go over the article with you guys today. Feel free to check it out yourself. The link to my sources are always in the description. So if you want to read the whole article for yourself, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I will pick and choose the questions and answers that I feel are very interesting for today. So if you guys are new to the channel and you want to stay up to date on all things in terms of Atlas News, SMT, Persona, Metaphor, Reef, Fantasio, you're at the right place. Make sure to subscribe, ring that notification bell as well as we're aiming for 20,000 subscribers this year in 2023 big goal but i feel like with you guys' help this is something that we can achieve a thumbs up if you like the video is always a big help now let's get into it with this article all right so here we are on persona central for the four gamer article we, so here is how the interview is made. We have your questions here from the interviewer from 4Gamer and then we have answers from either the uh, director of the game or producer, general producer and producer. So we have Takuya Yamaguchi, Kazuhiwa Wada and Ryota Nitsuma here. So, thank you for your time today. First, please tell us about the history of Persona 3 Reload. Firstly, we know that many people have wanted a remake. This reached us in many ways, including the survey that Atlas conducts a each year. It's always been one of the top titles that people would like to see remade. It was also an important project for us to develop on the development side and something that we couldn't start half-heartedly. The idea has been around for quite some time, however, development did not progress until the later half of 2019. So the game started development, like, or at least it started development with focus in 2019, which would be after the release of B5R. And something that is interesting here is the information that people have wanted to remake reached us in many ways, including the survey. So Persona 2 fans, Check this out because in this survey, the results of that survey has what is saying here. Persona 3 was the top game that fans wanted to see remade the most. But then it was Persona 2 right after with the exact same score. So Atlas chose to do P3 because they chose it. But at the end of the day, the survey results, we had an equal for P2 duology to be remade versus P3 to be remade. So that's really interesting to look at. And then we have another question here. Please tell us what kind of work P3 Remake is. Yamaguchi said, This is a full remake of the original Persona 3 released in 2006 for the PS2. Elements such as the worldview, story, and characters are unchanged from the original version. However, the game will be remade taking into account modern design and functionality so that it can be enjoyed to the standards of a current Persona game. And see, this is what I been discussing in these videos that I used to make about P3 Remake is they need to make this game feel more modern. If you played Persona 4 Golden, you played Persona 5 Royal, and you go back to FES on PS2, well, there's major problems for a newcomer who only played 4 and 5, and they are addressing those. So I feel like newer fans, but also older fans, will be down with P3 RE. Just speculating for now. Then Nitsuma added, Putting it simply, this is a remake that aims to allow players to experience P3 in a similar way to P5, which is pretty much what we've been saying. Persona 5 is the title that has become standard for how the games play for current Persona fans. We know this from surveys and other sources, but also because P5 is a title which has expanded the popularity of the Persona series worldwide, so both for domestic and overseas fans. And this can make you worry about a potential Persona 2 remake because they're really focusing on Persona 5 now for a bunch of reasons, obvious ones like Nitsuma is saying here the success of P5, but also because fans in general are seeing P5 as, hey, this is modern Persona, right? It just makes sense to me. And then he, he says, I think that players who have been who have been with this series from the start are also used to P5 gameplay as the standard. When they go back to play P3 for the first time in a while, they might feel it's more difficult to play. So I wonder if the players wanting for a remake are coming from this position too. Makes sense to me. 
Yes, that's true. The original game was released around 17 years ago, and looking at this series, we went from P3 to 5, and many spin-off games were released with the systems and playability being refined. Those who have played the series as it progressed will also feel that difficulty when re returning to Passworks. Of course, the same is true for those fans who started with P5. For the aspects that have been remade, what exactly has changed? And then Yamaguchi says, firstly, the easiest to understand part is the physical health system, which is something that the original had. It was part of... It was part of what made the original Persona 3 unique, but it also was removed in subsequent titles. Additionally, it doesn't mesh well with the calendar system, which has become a staple of modern Persona. It's the system that restricts your actions when tired or sick, right? It was a core part of the game's progression, but the randomness of this element sometimes made it difficult to progress as you wanted, says the interviewer. Yamaguchi says, yes, in the current Persona titles, I think the basic way to enjoy the game is to schedule and plan what to do each day and time, but the physical health system creates additional stress for that playstyle. Due to its randomness, it is harder for the player to manage their time, and when they get fatigued or sick, they can't take the actions they originally wanted to take. Even during battles, the randomness affected the choice the player could make, such as having negative effects on status or having allies leave on their own in the middle of dungeon or dungeon exploration. The random nature of that system removed the joy from a player's decision making. And then Wada follows up saying, The way we thought about dungeon exploration was different in P3 compared to now. At that time, it wasn't like today where you complete as much of a dungeon as possible in one day. But it was designed with the assumption that you would climb slowly over several days. So the fatigue system was one of the elements that made you go home. So basically, I think the fatigue system is, is, is gone now. I think they're going to completely take it off. They're clear here saying black on white that, hey... It's a system that is crusty and it doesn't really work anymore. So I can assume that this is going to be gone for Persona 3 Reload. I honestly don't mind. I think it makes total sense here. The interviewer asks here, it seems that there are none of the additional elements from Persona 3 FES or Persona 3 Portable because it is standard P3. However, new episodes are being added to the main story and social links. It is a question that they're asking. Weirdly translated here, I feel. Yamaguchi says the scenarios which were in the original, such as the main story and social links, are basically the same. There is no P3 FES post-story content or P3 P female protagonist. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't any elements from those two titles. See, this is what we've been discussing in the last video of Atlas News here on the channel. In addition, there are new scenarios which delve deeper into the world and characters in other ways. For example, there were no social links for the male party members in the original game. So unlike male party members in P4 and P5, they weren't able to build as much of a relationship or interact as much with the main character. Since social links remain the same as in the original, we can't give them new ones. However, we will prepare content However, we will prepare content which shows their character and their relationship with the main character in a different way. I can't talk about specific yet. However, I hope you look forward to it. This is very interesting. So if you are playing as Makoto, which in this version of the game you will be because no VMC, you didn't have a way to like connect deep on a deeper scale other than in the main story with the other male party members. Seems like they're going to try and tackle that here with reload and change that quite a bit. So that's going to be very interesting. Nitsuma says, I also want you to pay attention to the voice acting. I think voice acting is one of the high expectations of fans for the modern Persona series. Everything has been newly recorded and the volume has been increased considerably within the story and event scenes. Yamaguchi says, for example, in the social links in the series so far, there are many cases where they are only partially voiced. However, in P3R, all rank up events are fully voiced. This is awesome. So most of the social links or all the social links, the rank up events are going to be fully voiced, which is going to help because there's a lot of social links that they, they said it. They are keeping in that version of P3 that are kind of they're not as good as the social links that you would have in P5. But now maybe they change the environments that you're in. Maybe they add more interactions to those social links and they are adding voice acting to the rank up events in the social links. That is going to help quite a bit, in my opinion. And then he keeps on saying, even though I had seen these events many times prior to development, when they are voiced, I feel they resonate more deeply emotionally. I think that even those who played the game before will be able to experience the scenario in a new way. Very nice. 
Now, we have to talk about Tartarus here, and the interviewer knows that we have to talk about that. I would like to know about dungeon exploration and battles, but first, what has changed with Tartarus? It's a dungeon with over 250 floors, each randomly generated every time you enter, and it is directly connected to the game's world and story. However, the scenery doesn't change much and progression tends to be monotonous. I wonder how this was tackled when creating the remake. Yamaguchi said, It was the first thing that came up as a point for improvement when starting to work on the remake and it was something which has... which which was had a lot of discussions about. Of course, we were aware of what the fans felt. As you said, however, Tartarus is closely tied to the world and story, so we couldn't change the structure of the dungeon. See, this is what I was saying when I used to do, uh, I made a video a long time ago saying we don't need a Persona 3 remake, and this was one of my main points. Tartarus, it's a concept that doesn't work anymore, in my opinion. In modern year, modern day, with modern games and stuff, it, it's a mechanic that doesn't really work. And if you are to remake Persona 3, you cannot completely take off Tartarus. You cannot do something completely different. You have to keep it. Therefore, a remaster would be more appropriate. That's what I said before, and they're basically confirming that, hey, we cannot completely change the structure of the dungeon. Interesting, that's from the producer himself, so I was not totally wrong on this one. <laughs> the interviewer says that's right. Will it become monotonous? Part of the appeal of P3 is the sense of emptiness as you gradually ascend Tartarus during the gloomy, dark hour. Was it hard to reconstruct it while preserving its atmosphere? Yes, for example, we couldn't create a fixed dungeon like in P5 with its various gimmick by reducing the number of floors. So while staying faithful to the original, we created a dungeon which can be enjoyed without getting bored by adding numerous small elements. One example is conversations between allies. At regular intervals, there's unique dialogue that can only be heard in the dungeon. Additionally, objects which can be destroyed and background movements have been added. These minor interactive elements and visual changes may seem insignificant, but they were they will greatly make the gameplay feel more engaging and prevent it from becoming tedious. Makes total sense. Water says Tartarus has been improved thanks to the expressive power of the Unreal Engine. We were able to faithfully adapt Tartarus into a three-dimensional widescreen format while capturing the essence of the original, but with a lot of variety. It is quite hard to convey with screenshot, but with the use of various lighting effects, the visual create an immersive experience preventing it from being monotonous. Another element I'm curious about, just like Tartarus, is the battle system. Firstly, the player can give direct commands to party members, right? Also, has the AI been able to be improved in this day and age? So, before we get to the answer, we gotta remember Persona 3 Portable had a modern combat system where you direct control your party members, you give them direct commands. In the original Persona 3 and in FES, you choose what type of commands you want your party members to use, whether it's offensive, defensive, or supportive. You choose what Yukari is gonna do, you choose what Akihiko is going to do, but you don't directly control them. This is what the uh, review, um, interviewer is asking about. Yamaguchi says the player can give direct commands, which has been standard since before. There is also the options when where players can set a general direction and let party members fight automatically. So please think of it as part of the gameplay style the Persona series is known for today. This is awesome. This is great to see because older fans, they still have their command system. And then newer fans or older fans who prefer direct commands like myself, we have the ability to direct command your party members. This was a must for this remake in my opinion. And they're ending with, so finally, please give a message to readers who are anticipating Persona 3 Reload and fans of the Persona series. Now, Aguchi says, Firstly, I would like to say thank you for waiting. It's a special project for us, and we have finally been able to realize this remake because of everyone continuing to voice their support. We will continue to deliver information in the lead-up to release, so I hope that original players will be able to see what has changed and what hasn't. And those who hadn't heard of P3 before can follow along as if it's a new game made from scratch. Scratch. Nitsuma said with this announcement, I think we've been able to show what P3 would look like if P-Studio made it today. We would like to show that it is a game that can be played today whether you are familiar with the original or not. It has been made with respect and care for the original version. The release is still some time away, but I hope that you will continue looking forward to it. Wada says, every time we complete a game as developers, we feel somewhat uneasy, thinking maybe we could have done this better or will everyone like this? We often approach release with this sort of atmosphere. With P3 Reload, all the staff have been 
able to reach the final stages of development with the feeling that a good product has, has been made, which is rare. I think that this is a title we can release with a lot of confidence. I want to release it to everyone as soon as possible. However, please wait a little longer. So this was a very interesting interview here by 4Gamer. Shout out to them for that because I liked everything that we read today. Lots of big improvements are being put into Reload. I am very confident about this release as a longtime fan of the series and someone who started to play Persona with 3. I, I love what I'm hearing. So direct command, that's a must. Changes to Tartarus, that was a must as well. And it's here. Changes to social links, fully voiced when you rank up. I have to agree with the devs on this one and hey, I don't care if I'm, I sound like a simp at this point, but I feel like this is going to help a lot because these social links, I swear, to try it again, play portable on modern platforms if you bought it before, otherwise if you have an older version of P3, try it out because those social links, they feel, most of them, not all of them, but they don't feel as special as the modern ones that we have in 4, for example. So. Great stuff there. What stood out to you in this interview, you guys? Are you as excited as I am for P3 Reload? The more I hear about it, the more I am confident about it. And if you stayed until the end of this video, let me just say, if you want Persona 3 Reload on Switch, don't be worried. Don't be. Just don't be. And I'll leave it at that. You have a great day, y'all. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you liked the video. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye.